Okay, welcome everyone to the Bergen Forum and thank you uh, for coming. Uh, we've got a pretty exciting uh, lineup today. Just let me make one announcement, which is uh, next week's Bergen Forum is an unusual speaker. Uh, Dean Foyan was the former deputy mayor of New York City. And uh, he's now a senior fellow at the Cooney Institute for State and Local Governments. He is going to give a talk entitled New York City and the COVID Crisis, something that he's obviously very knowledgeable about. So that's an outside speaker. And, uh, you know, I hope you'll publicize that and uh, come along. Today, we're very happy to have a panel with us um, from the College of Business. And uh, this is Diana Maguire, uh, Yavuz Kuchelli and Halil Zaim. And they're going to give a talk entitled, How Well Do Students Feel Represented in the University? So thank you, speakers. <clears throat> thank you, Amrus, and thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Diane McGuire, Javus, and Halil. Uh, as he said, we are all uh, faculty members in the College of Business. The study that we're gonna talk about today uh, began about a year ago, and I have to preface this discussion um, that the study is still ongoing. We uh, are not finished with this study, and we're sharing a portion of it with you today um, as we've gotten this far, uh, solely concentrating on the responses that we received from Alfred University. So we, uh, when I explain the study, I will discuss that we surveyed students and received a number of responses. We have additional data in our study of students at other universities, but that's not included in what we're gonna share with you today. Although it does raise a number of interesting questions on comparing data sets and information that we've found. We started this study with the help of a couple of students who were particularly interested in diversity and inclusion and understanding the important concept of representation and that you know the diversity is important, inclusion is even more important to make um, people feel welcome and, and that they have a voice and mentoring and that connection that we make to other people um, really can be critical to a student's success and becoming involved and feeling that they're a part of this larger institution. So those are some of the areas that we wanted to investigate with our students. Um, we pride ourselves on being an open inclusive campus here, but we wanted to see what did our students feel? and in, in a number of different areas. So the purpose of this study was to evaluate students' perceptions of diversity. So how much diversity did they perceive? Representation, meaning how did, those, did the students surveyed feel that they saw themselves in members of the faculty, staff, and administration? And did they feel that the university had a culture of inclusion? Um, students um, perceived that the, we wanted to measure those factors on student satisfaction, uh, whether they impacted the student's involvement in the university in terms of clubs and athletics and other ways that students participate. And ultimately, we wondered does a student um, have an interest in pursuing a career in academia dependent on whether they see themselves represented? So that could really be twofold. Do I see other people like me in faculty and administration and staff that then I could envision myself in such a position? or also the other alternative that I don't see people like myself. So does that challenge me to want to be in a career? Um, so those are some of the, the data points that we were interested in collecting. The research questions that we developed are listed here on the screen for you. And when we talk about representation, it's on a number of factors. So ethnicity, gender, religion, political views. And we ask that in regard to each of the employee types, faculty, staff, and administration. 
So we ask questions to each of those diversity measures. Do you feel represented in terms of gender in your faculty? Do you feel represented in terms of gender in your staff and, and so on? Um, so we did ask on a number of different diversity measures as well as different groups of people who they could be represented in. We asked general questions on whether they felt that the university was inclusive. And we sought after information about whether that perception of being inclusive impacted their perception of diversity or representation. So sort of overarching question there in regard to inclusivity and representation. And then finally, to what degree did these students perceived diversity and representation impact their outcomes? And again, we measured outcomes as um, involvement and satisfaction and feeling, um, you know, and participating in clubs and activities and such. Halil is going to speak to some of the literature review um, that we uh, found in regard to this study. Okay, thank you for having us in the first place and thank you for being here with us. So when we look at the literature, uh, the, the concept of diversity is defined as you see here, the similarities and differences between us and between others. So that's what diversity with respect to as mentioned, religiosity, ethnicity, culture, disability, education, gender, nationality, and so on and so forth. And here, the perceived diversity is more about awareness of these differences or similarities. So the awareness of how we are thinking of others is the concept here. So that is more important than what is actually happening. Are we aware of our differences? And our, are we aware of our similarities? And how do we value this? How do we see this? How do we manage this? This is the, the key point in our research point and in the literature. And it includes the mental representation of inclusion of members. So the degree to which we feel that we are a member of a group or not, and the degree to which how well we think we are represented in the group. And that representation or that perception, definitely in literature makes it evident that this, this affects the outcomes outcomes of the organization or outcomes of the individuals. So in terms of individuals, what outcomes do we, can we talk about? If, I'm, if I think that I'm represented well, and if I think that I'm, no, I'm a part of group, I have the similarities or differences and we are well managing this, what do you think might be the outcome here? What are the personal outcomes, possible personal outcomes? Satisfaction, isn't it? For example, I feel satisfied. I feel relieved. I feel safe, right? Or I feel anxiety. I feel you know, problems here. So that that affects individually. And if the group feel this way, if the group feel that we are well represented, and if the group feel that we are aware of each other's differences and similarities, and it doesn't matter for us, and we can well manage this, then it includes the group's outcomes as well in terms of creativity, in terms of innovation, in terms of harmony, in terms of cohesiveness, and so on and so forth. Therefore, it is evident in the literature that this managing the diversities and perception of the people regarding that diversities definitely makes some, uh, some outcomes, affects the outcomes, positively or negatively, with respect to how you manage this, of course. And here, one more important thing is this. Uh, we, we, it is called in the literature uh, salad bowl theory. <laughs> Have you heard of it or not? I'm not sure. No, we're not planning to, it's not, it's not you know, aim to make a soup. For example, lentil soup. Do you know lentil soup? It's very Turkish, in, it's very famous in Turkish culture, lentil soup. So lentil soup, you put the, everything inside, onion, lentil, tomato, whatever, and blend it up and everything becomes one taste. So you cannot differentiate them anymore. There's only one taste there. But in salad, tomato, onion, whatever, carrot comes together. They make, they form a, a, a dish, but still 
the identities are not mixed up. Tomato is still tomato, salad is still salad, but together they make a good, delicious form. So that's what we mean, you know, in terms of diversity management, in terms of representation, in terms of inclusiveness, you know, inclusive culture. We don't mean that, you know, smashing up people's identities and putting them into a one cup and making a soup. Rather, we mean putting in them in together in harmony so that we can make everybody's identities appear there. Everybody's identities are there because that makes us who we are, you know, isn't it? Our identities, our differences actually makes us who we are. And we want the same thing. We want our students to feel in the same way. So we are ask, asking them, do you feel the same way? And how well you think you are represented there? And it's going to be affecting their We'll see. Is it going to affect or not? Okay. Thank you. Our research model is demonstrated for you on this slide here. And although every every piece of this study uh, offers interesting information and insight, uh, but we start with the concept of perception of the university's culture as being inclusive and welcoming. Um, from there, we formed the hypotheses of do students perceive diversity and do students perceived representation um, impact student outcomes? So each of those is measured in the study individually as well as collectively. And ultimately, we wanted to know then, based on those student outcomes, those student activities, those student participation, are students motivated to pursue an academic career? It's a bit of a selfish motive in some parts to know whether we can be growing um, people that would be the next generation of, of faculty, um, but also just to try to understand how a student's experience with their higher educational institution can impact whether they consider this as an area that they would want to be employed um, or pursue for their education so that they could be um, have a career in higher education. As I mentioned, the survey data was collected using an online survey. <clears throat> Again, we're just gonna share today just some results from uh, preliminary results from Alfred University. Uh, we actually have additional data that we're still adding to the, to the study before we would take this to um, a publication. But based on the data that we'll show today, we had 115 um, responses and we had 31 questions. Um, that were part of that, that document that, that students um, completed. We had a decent amount of um, variation in terms of students' majors and um, class years and so forth that completed the survey. And we, we mostly uh, sampled based on convenience. Um, our classes, uh, you know, shared through, through coaches or, or however we could just get students to participate in the survey. And so uh, we collected the data and when it comes to analyzing, first we need to do some factor analysis. Uh, uh, for, you, for those of you who are not familiar with the concept, so when you have multiple questions or multiple variables to describe one phenomenon, like then you talk about <laughs> diversity it could have multiple dimensions, and we use the factor analysis and uh, to make sure that if we can statistically merge those factors in, uh, merge those variables into one factor, and that one factor is represented by all the variables in the questionnaire. Uh, we use Chromas Alpha to make sure that each uh, factor is uh, internally reliable, and then we use the structural equation modeling to test the hypothesis. Uh, for the inclusive culture, perceived representation, student outcomes, and the motivation to pursue academic career, we had most of our variables to merge into one factor reliably. But on the other hand, perceived diversity was split into two factors, which means students perceived the representation in the faculty members in terms of their political views is perceived 
different than uh, their uh, diverse representation in terms of ethnicity, race, and gender either. So I don't, it kind of makes sense. Like most probably the students are not much concerned about their professors or instructors uh, being conservative or liberal, or if the students are identify themselves as conservatives or liberals in terms of their political views. So the perceived representation in terms of political views cannot be merged with the perceived representation in terms of ethnicity, race, and gender. Uh, that's why we had to consider that as two separate factors. So in our uh, hypothesis testing, we see that students' perceived diversity has actually no impact on the student outcomes. But uh, students, the, the university's inclusive culture has a positive impact on the students' perceived diversity and perceived representation. Students' perceived representation has positive impact on the student outcomes and the student outcomes has positive impact on the student's motivation to pursue an academic career. So the, one of the main motivations of this research is that if as a student, I feel that I'm not represented or I'm not re well represented in the faculty members, does this motivate me to pursue an academic career and become a faculty member myself so that the, the my, understanding of the, uh, my, my representation in the faculty members would be a uh, better increase. So it does that, is, 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 can we just say that students feel unrepresented would lead them to pursue an academic career so that they can actually uh, represent themselves in the faculty members. And we can see that there's a positive correlation between the student outcomes and the pursuit like the motivation to pursue an academic career. So uh, as we can increase our university's inclusive culture, this will indirectly lead to increase the motivation of the students to pursue an academic career themselves. So to summarize our findings, four points. An inclusive culture we found to have a positive impact on students' perceived diversity and perceived representation. As Javus indicated, what we can do to improve or promote our inclusivity in our culture and the way that students feel about the university, um, that did positively impact their perceptions. Student outcomes have a positive impact on students pursuing an academic career. That seems um, you know, positive and hopeful. Students' perception, as Yavuz also was um, uh, indicating, students' perceptions of political backgrounds is different than their perceptions of diversity in terms of race, ethnicity, gender, and religion. In, in discussing this amongst ourselves, we've all also um, or already questioned, um, does that mean that they see this you know, differently or do they just not even perceive the, um, or understand uh, a, per, a professor or a person's political backgrounds? Maybe that doesn't enter into a classroom. Um, so they, they are, their responses on the survey um, as Javus indicated, we're different. We don't, we can't say at this point, like different positively, different negatively. It's just not at the same degree um, that their perceptions of the other factors were. And unlike perceived diversity, perceived representation had a positive impact on student outcomes. And as I mentioned, those student outcomes we measured as satisfaction, feeling valued, participating in teams and clubs. Questions? I think it was just, um, 
PV1 and PV2, that has the political orientation. Is that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is PD1 and PD2 representing uh, political orientation? PD1 is the political orientation. PD2 is the others, yeah. race, ethnicity, the and others religion. could gender. be grouped together to evaluate as a variable. That's what I thought. I just wanted yeah. to be sure. And then a follow-up question. So did the students self-report their own political orientation? Uh, no. No, I don't believe that we get No, we didn't ask that question. I was kind of curious as there, there seems to be, I think in general in, in higher education, there's a tendency towards uh, more liberal perspective, both historically for faculty and to some extent for young people. So I just wonder whether, you know, ones who were conservative in a more liberal environment, whether that they would score that differently than the whole group. So I was curious about that. It could be another research question, that one. Definitely. A, a good one. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure that I'm following it correctly. Can you go back to the previous slide? So the um, perceived diversity versus the perceived representation has a positive impact. So whether I see myself in the people in the university will have a good impact on how well I perform? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. <laughs> my next question. I was actually going to ask for clarification. Perceived diversity is the artificial question. Do you think the university is diverse? The other one is all about, do you feel represented? So the student's perception of the university being diverse has no impact on the student outcomes, but the student's perception of being represented in the faculty members is having a positive outcome. Or it's maybe better to say we cannot have enough evidence to prove that. That's the technical term. Yeah, we don't have we don't have enough sufficient evidence to prove that students perceive diversity as an impact on their outcomes. So that's that's the correct version of saying it. How to you know say it? Because maybe there is, but we so far we don't have enough sufficient evidence, so we cannot claim that. Right. Yeah. So I have a question. Thank you so much for this. Um, this uh, presentation, but I was just curious, do you think if professors or faculty are open about their political views, do you think that, I know you're still finding more information, do you think that attracts students in a way like, oh, this professor is very open about what they, uh, what they think and what they believe, but still being respectful, or do you think when professors are open about their political affiliations that uh, like maybe pulls students away because I know some of the professors that I've had, uh, they're like, oh no, I won't say anything about that. I won't say anything about, but I was just curious. You probably heard me say that. In class. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, you ask a wonderful question. It's not particularly answered by our study, um, but it's a great discussion point. Um, and I really think it so depends on, on the course. I'm speaking just as a faculty member that whether it's appropriate for a political discussion to enter into the classroom at all. And certainly in some disciplines, it's highly appropriate. I can't imagine Yahoo's ever talking about politics in a stats class, you know? I just, there's, there's some classes that's just not gonna be there. Um, if others have well, what yeah. what I thought while running the analysis is not about the political views, but maybe students' major may have some impact. Like a, a student from the College of Engineering might be less concerned about the political views about who's teaching like advanced calculus because numbers are numbers. But a student in the like. College of Liberal Arts, discussing more, let's say, more concepts from the life itself in the classroom. They might be more concerned about the uh, political views of who is teaching, let's say, American history. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, on the topic of the, politi of the political diversity of faculty, I don't know if people read, there's a 
op-ed piece in the New York Times this morning about, it was a very interesting piece about the um, arguing from the conservative point of view that, cons that um, conservative faculty ought to be assigning more really good quality conservative um, classical texts. It mentioned the statistic that the, um, the number of sociologists in academia who identify as uh, conservative is uh, well, Republican is 0%. <laughs> <laughs> I, my question is whether, whether you've got any sense for, of uh, a difference in the uh, different findings between uh, disciplines or between fields like business or uh, social sciences or arts or um, uh, anything like that. Might be interesting, but usually, no. I'm not very involved in politics myself, so I'm not interfering these kind of things in the classroom. But, but, I, but I meant um, in terms in of your research. research. Yeah. I don't believe yeah. we've elected student major. We, we call it student. We did, okay. We didn't evaluate, <laughs> but it's a good question. Um, so so you, you could actually analyze. We can. We can. Yeah. Yeah. We are just collecting more data. data. So you have um, perceived diversity and perceived representation. So do we have any sense of whether students, you, you know, say, you know, I'm white, but if I have students who feel like I'm an ally or feel like, um, you know, I'm working toward their cause, is there anything in your survey that gets at that, like perceived allyship or, perceived, you know, when you say perceived representation that they feel like faculty are on their side, even if they are not, of their identified social identity. And then you have people on the chat who are like raising their hand and stuff. Well, I guess if we had a question that went to that point, it would be the feeling of an inclusive culture at, at the university. But um, I don't know if you have any additional- Those, those questions are actually very good questions for us because it's an ongoing, ongoing prog in progress study. So we can include kind of uh, in-depth interviews, including these kind of things. Because in questionnaire, it's very difficult to ask everything. You know, it's a very, because if you increase the number of questions in a questionnaire, you know, it's going to be, you know, difficult for the students to fill it up. So we cut it, you know, very, make it very small, small number of questions. Therefore, we cannot include many things. But thank you for these questions. So we can Consider about Dr. Fine would probably love to run a focus group. Yes, we can run a focus group and we can go for you know more qualitative data collection process as well. And that would be very wonderful to uh, you know include these kind of topics. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, can you see the chat? <clears throat> yes, we have questions I can hear. Okay, I'll read out a couple of questions from the chat. Um, 115 responses, how many questionnaires were distributed? But it's an online questionnaire. We don't have a, like, a count of this. Thing. And these are the only responses from the Alfred University. We have more responses from outside the Alfred University. So this is not the entire data. Okay. Um, another question. This, this is both from Gary Ostra. Do black students at AU feel positive about both diversity and inclusivity? Do Latino students? Do AU women students? So, sort of, I don't know if you kind of um, do analysis in terms of black students, Latino students, female students. We have the data. We haven't run the analysis yet. Do you have the chat now? Oh, oh, so. Now. so uh, Amanda, let me ask you this question. Female engineering students have confided in me that they feel frustrated at the lack of female students in the engineering school. There have been times in the past that my calculus classes were nearly all young men, though diversity seems to have improved. Do you have a sense of how females in particular are affected by a lack of representation in their particular fields among their peers rather than among the university faculty and staff? Do you have a sense of how females in particular are affected? Well, same. <laughs> We did not ask about feelings of uh, well, their peers, correct? Uh, yes, we didn't ask questions. We didn't ask the question about that, yes. Did you want to add something? Well, we have the date that students, like the respondents, uh, their own ethnicity, race, gender. We didn't ask their political views, like 
if they no. add it. But we can still split the data set into like the answer the first question, do black students and do Latin students, they actually differ or they have the same response. Mm -hmm. And we can also do it for the female and male students if their uh, responses to those questions differ or they are yeah. and, and, the and, and colleges too? Colleges? Major. We don't have the colleges. We have the majors. The yeah. areas were of where they we asked the questions about their perceived diversity and representation was in terms of faculty, staff, and administration. Yes. Didn't ask in terms of fellow yeah, fellow Yes, we didn't ask that one. Well, someone must answer it. Would you? Thanks. Um, first, before I ask the question, I just want to make the distinction or, or, or make the point that I, I think of math as part of the liberal arts and sciences. So uh, I see your I see the point you're making. But I although I also think that politics plays a much larger role in, in fields like uh, math or, or biology or chemistry than we often think. And our biology uh, teachers have started to incorporate those things into the foundations of biology. But um, but the question I wanted to ask was about you, the slide at the end where you say uh, perceived representation leads to positive student outcomes. So does that mean that what you what you discovered is that the students, at least the students, I recognize you're still collecting data, but at least the students that you have collected data from so far are saying that they do perceive Alfred as as uh, having representation that that for, for their own identities. In other words, that could go like it depends on what they're saying, right? How how you would measure that. So my question, I guess, is: Are they saying yes? There's a we are perceiving representation here on campus. <laughs> and, you know, because like if you so if you're saying that perceived representation leads to good student outcomes, right? Yes. yes. You, you first, the first question you have to know is, do the students perceive representation? If they all say, I don't perceive representation, you, you can't know how they would feel if they did. So I guess my question is, does that result imply that the students are saying that they perceive representation on campus? Well, I don't, I, if, if I had the data set right here, I could give you the answer. Because we didn't actually look to descriptives of their responses. We just look at the correlation, like the, sorry, the regression. But when, if, if you just send me an email, I will respond to you. Because I don't have the data set here right now. You can easily look at if the responses are leaning towards the higher grades or the lower grades in their uh, response to the questionnaire. But since I don't have the data set here, I cannot answer your question right now, right now. Okay, great. Let me and let me try one more different uh, way, differently. Is the question that you asked, uh, do you perceive representation on campus, or is the question that you asked, does perceived representation lead to better outcomes no, for no, you? No, no, no. We have like you know, uh, this question like I feel represented in terms of my religion. I have, I feel so, represented, so, and then so, we so, have this so, analysis. So we have the answer of your question, but not right now. <laughs> we can easily find out the answer. Yeah, we have we have the data. And I'm sorry, by the way, I have a class at one, so I will ask for your permission to leave. I'm sorry for that. Thank you, Dr. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. Yeah, I wanted to ask, um, I know that there's like a high percentage of queer students. Why didn't you include any questions about representation in like sexuality or gender identity? We did. Gender identity was also included. Yeah, but not about specific queer identities. Well, none of the questions are that specific, right? So students, questions like, I feel represented in terms of my religion. So we do not just break it down like which religion. Well, I, I took I took the survey and I, <laughs> yes. like I I know what you're saying, but you didn't ask. Do you feel represented in terms of your sexuality or? I think we included gender, but we not did, the, we included gender identity. Um, but again, like we <laughs> when we included race, we didn't ask like you know a specific race. We just we but you said, do you feel represented in terms of race? And there were no questions about feeling represented as 
like your sexuality or as part of the queer community? Well, the sexuality is in the part of demographic section. Like at the top of the uh, questionnaire, like there's a, we have the data about the students' race, ethnicity, and sexuality as well. And we can actually uh, do uh, some group analysis to make sure that students with different sexual identities have different feelings about representation. We can actually do that. But we didn't include in the study, we, did, we haven't done the group analysis yet. Because in the demographics, we know that which students identify as like non-binary, uh, like oh, uh, transgender, or uh, all kinds of uh, sexual identity, identity and uh, sexual orientation. I know that it might not be included in the representation questions, but we definitely know if the students is identifying as like, for example, non-binary, that is in the demographic part of the uh, questionnaire. Thank you. We just not include because we haven't done the group analysis yet. Hi. Can you okay? Um Mike, I feel like we've had this question a few different ways, but there seems to be a real demand for those descriptive data set oriented, right? So I'm not gonna ask all those questions, but um since there's such an interest, I know that you're investigating this correlation, but do you plan to make those descriptive? Um, and that, yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> the majority of the responses I we get to this questionnaire is from the Alfred University. We had like more than 190 something responses. And from the statistic point of view that the responses are not well distributed among multiple universities, so we want to improve the data sets towards getting responses from other universities as well, so that we will have a more distributed data set. And again, we are still in the process of collecting data, but unfortunately, it's not easy to get the responses from students in other universities. So when we have a more uh, well-balanced, well-distributed response set, we will go into more detailed, or I'll say like we will dissect the data set into more details. So this is more like a preliminary result of our findings. Okay, thank you. But hold on, Amanda, Diane, could you read me what Amanda said and talk about then? Yep, definitely. Uh, this last one here. The group analysis seems crucial. Otherwise, majority responses to these general questions will sway the answers to students seeming to feel represented instead of revealing issues among minority groups. And I look forward to seeing the group analysis results. Again, when we have more responses from students outside Alfred University, we will have a more balanced distributed data set. Then we will just go in. So this, these results are only from responses, only from Alfred University. And it's just like a preliminary results. It's a, still an ongoing process. If you'd like to help in that process, I found that the best way that I was able to get responses from students at another university was to appeal to a faculty member or a dean at another college um, and ask them to specifically, you know, get a class or a group there um, to answer our survey. So if any of you are willing to make those connections with us, um, we'd welcome it. Um, because as I said, that would seem to be the best results that I was able to get. I agree with the uh, importance of accounting for something like sexuality, because that is without question part of who somebody is and part of how they might feel represented. But how would you account for the fact that some people in the community might choose to keep that private and then end up, you know, how, how would that impact the, the survey results? Something like the color of our skin is pretty obvious for everybody to see. Well, something like somebody's sexuality is something that some people might choose to keep private. And I wonder how that might confound any ability to truly perform that kind of analysis. Or is it kind of self-correcting because if the person doesn't see somebody who they think is like them, then that pretty much answers the question anyway. I, I, I'm... Yeah, I, I, I agree that it becomes a challenge um, in, in some of the sense of as we were having the political discussion, if a faculty member is not open um, about their political views, then it's difficult for a student to understand whether they feel represented or not. Um, so if 
if a person is not open about their sexual orientation um, or gender identity or any, you know that, um, then that does become a barrier to a connection with with a student. Well, actually, there are two sides of the question. For example, a student may say that I identify as a conservative, but I perceive the majority of my professors are liberals. So I don't feel represented, but I don't care about that at all. So student feeling represented is one side of the question. Although the student doesn't feel represented, especially with the, uh, the political views, so that, okay, I don't feel represented here. I, like the majority of my uh, professors have a different political view than I am, but for anyway, it doesn't affect my uh, student life in, at the college because we see that the political views is like the, but a little bit different than other uh, dimensions of that diversity, including race. So again, there are two sides of the question. Number one, the students feel actually feel represented or not? And the second side of the question, even though they don't feel represented, would that bother that? Because sometimes students might not be bothered for not being represented politically, but they might be concerned about not being represented in terms of race, ethnicity, or gender identity. And again, it's too early to tell, but most probably that is the reason why we could not merge the political identity and other dimensions of diversity in one factor. Most probably feeling not represented in terms of political view would not affect the students' outcome as much as the students feel representation about race, ethnicity, or gender identity. I think we have, we have time for just one more question. And Lakeen has been trying to get in. Uh, is he there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi. Uh, first of all, I, I want to commend you. This seems that there's a lot of work and, 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 and it is very important for, for, for people to start doing this study. However, I, my question is, it, well, it's a comment slash question is, I think that it's very important to to do these studies using oh, some desegregation of data. The, the thing that the problem with putting everybody in one basket is that you you can you can whitewash when it comes to race. You can straightwash when it comes to 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 uh, when, when it comes to sexual identity. You can. A Christian wash when it comes to religion, because clearly it's going to be different the perception of diversity for a white student than what is the perception of diversity for a black student. Because for a white student, maybe diversity is having one professor that is black. And for a white, for a black student, that may and probably is not enough. So, so, so it, it, the desegregation of the data is kind of like really, really important, and 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 and, and I mean, almost is is like an like a like a like an issue of equity. I mean, I I, I think that a, one of my suggestions for you will be like maybe try to to do this desegregation of data and asking just how the pe people identify, and then the questions will be directed as their own identity and if they see themselves represented in the Alfred University community. Yes, I, I believe we've said we agree. And if we can get more data, then we'll be at the point that we can do some of that further analysis. Thank you.